Boosteroid is a cloud gaming service that's becoming more and more popular. It's clearly targeting GeForce now, as it's a very similar business model. It offers you the possibility to play the games you already own in either Steam, Epic, Xbox and a few other platforms. Now, what separates Boosteroid from GeForce Now is a feature that is also very controversial. Let's talk about this service. One of the first hiccups people find when checking Boosteroid is that you actually need to sign up before you can try anything, even just to check the network speed with their servers or see the games list. So it feels a bit shady. There are currently two plans for Boosteroid, Standard and Ultra. Here are the monthly prices. Installing Boosteroid is pretty straightforward. You can play it from the browser or you can download one of the dedicated apps. They're available for Windows, Mac, Linux and Chromebook, as far as computers go, iOS and Android for mobiles and Android and WebOS for TVs. In my experience, both the desktop and TV apps work well, but unfortunately I had quite a few issues with the Android mobile app. Luckily I was able to work around those issues by just using the web browser version. The full library of Boosteroid is divided in two areas. The regular library and another section for install and play titles. What's the deal with this? Install and play are games that aren't part of the system by default, but you are allowed to install them right before you play. It sounds like a really long thing, but thanks to their fast servers and some clever tech, this actually happens quite fast. Now, this is a hard one to judge because on the one hand it allows you to do cloud gaming with many games that no other services allow. On the other hand, there's a price to pay for that. First, the process can go from slightly annoying to incredibly messy, depending on the specific title. And secondly, the devs for these games know nothing about these games being used for cloud gaming, which, again, sounds quite shady to me. This is clearly a bold and a strategic move from Boosterate. I mean, if we compare this service with GeForce Now, you can see how much overlap there is with their games library. Obviously, GeForce Now is way bigger. It's massive at close to 2000 games. But if we check the library, only about 36% of the games from Boosteroid are not in GeForce Now, which I would say is a normal amount of crossover between services. Now, if we check the install and play section, more than 60% of the games are not in GeForce Now, and probably in most other services. So this install and play option is clearly where they know they can attract a lot of users that can't play many of those games in the cloud anywhere else. I tried quite a few titles and had problems with some of them. In some instances, installing the game forced me to jump a number of hurdles and endless screens, uh, which on a controller were very tricky to navigate. It also seems that the web browser version works better than the app, especially the Android app, where I had trouble with a number of games. Ace Combat 7 was a bit messy to install the first time, but then it worked fine on TV. On the Android app, the analog controls were not working, but they did work on the browser version. With Red Dead Redemption 2, it was impossible to get the game started after the install on the app version, but again, the browser did work. The TV app version worked well too. By the way, I just started playing this game, I know, I know, quite late, but wow, it's ridiculous how good it is. Even games that are supposed to be part of the main library, such as Alien Isolation, were suffering from the analog controls back. Again, I was able to play it by jumping into the browser version. By the way, I beat this game so long ago, I had forgotten how good it was. It's just a piece of art. I don't think it's perfect because it has a couple of issues, but it's a really special game. I might need to make a video about it one day. The performance for the gaming sessions themselves have been pretty good and it didn't show any major hiccups. I had a couple of sessions on Mafia Definitive Edition where it crashed from the main menu. Overall, once you get the tricky part, which is getting into the game, things seem to run pretty well. At least that has been my experience. This might change depending on your distance to your closest booster or server, but so far so good. Everything works well in-game, and you get access to some games that at least, through cloud gaming, are impossible to find anywhere else. Everything that happens before we are in-game, it's slow and messy. It's not very reliable, especially the Android app. But there were occasional issues on the TV app too. And even for games that don't need install, you need to manually launch them sometimes. 
It all feels very convoluted when compared to the invisible and nice interface from GeForce Now. I will understand this for install and save games, but for games that are actively part of the library? Also, the app layout for the TV and Android versions is really bad. I hope that's part of its beta state. And then there's the moral problem. We all understand why some many well-known games are in instant safe mode. This means Booster 8 hasn't negotiated anything with the game developers, which is why they let you be the one that installs the game into your virtual machine. Whether you agree with this practice or not, that's a personal matter. But it's a very important point, because most of the games that actually separate Booster 8 from GeForce Now are part of this instant and save option. Well, and that's all about Booster 8. My experience with it, as well as what you can expect from it as of 2024. I hope this helped. If it did, make sure to click like and subscribe for more content like this. And enjoy your gaming in a relaxed setting.